Yeah, I was about to go outside before I went. I just wanted to check out METC. I'm an upgrade member over there, so I just wanted to see, you know, what was going on. And I was like, what the freak is going on by New York? And I saw all these orange lights, which is, you see the orange and black symbols by New York. Then you have the A. The A is as high as it gets on this scale. But you see all these orange and the Radcon 5, and you have a bunch of Radcon 4s around this area. What's around New York City, New York, New York? Well, Indian Point. And I went through the NRC documents today, and look and behold, Indian Point just had a leak, and they reported it. And actually, I probably wasn't going to find it, because if you go through the NRC reports, you're going to find several accidents per day dealing with radiation in the United States. Now think about that. And a lot of these places, let's see, a lot of the radiation that's being released is at hospitals. But anyway, this was at the very end of the NRC report. Let's go through it. The event, 611, which was yesterday. They classify it as a non-emergency. But when you're looking at the NETC.map, I see lots of Radicon 4s. I've never seen so many Radicon 4s disconcentrated. So here's what they say. They call it an excessive bonnet leakage from chemical volume control system valve. At Indian Point Energy Center, IPEC, Unit 3 normal letdown was isolated due to a significant body bonnet leak on the inlet valve to reactor coolant filter. Shift team took action to isolate letdown and stop the leak. The abnormal operating procedure, AOEP, was entered. Normal letdown was isolated per procedure. An excess letdown was placed in service to balance inventory at 61% pressurizer level. This was above the technical specification level of 54.3%, which is exceeded. 0911, putting the unit in a 6 hour shutdown action statement. The valve body bonnet was torqued, successfully eliminating the leakage, so they say. Pressurizer level was restored to the normal control band and the AOP was exited. AOP is the abnormal operating procedure. The shift manager estimated the leakage at 18 gallons per minute when the leak was active. And you could just multiply that 18 gallons probably by 10 or 100 or 1000 because they probably will not tell you the total amount that they leaked out. But they're going to give you an absolute minimum. They say 18 gallons per minute. How long was it leaking? Could be hours, probably days, maybe months, perhaps even years. No EAL, emergency action level thresholds were exceeded. How does that make you feel that when you look at a radiation map and you see several Radcon 4s and you see alert status 5, which is Radcon 5 alert, that's as high as it gets on this map anyway. And we see all those concentrated together, but that doesn't meet a threshold for emergency action level, or it was exceeded. It just tells you that our thresholds must be pretty high up there. The occurrence is considered a safety system functional failure per 10 CFR, requiring an 8 hour NRC report. Both IPEC units are stable and at full power now, but now they say it was a 6 hour shutdown. So it could have been leaking during that six hour shutdown. How long is it leaking? It could have been leaking for years. The power goes out completely and then you have a larger leak.
I also found they had a leak at a West Virginia processing, uranium processing where they're reprocessing the missiles. They're developing isotopes that are really poisonous and there was a malfunction here at this uranium processing facility and I have seen some high readings there at the West Virginia site as well and some of that could be also blowing into New York just adding even more. Chemical processing malfunction. Potential backflow. Backflow of uranium bearing solution from a fissile solution processing system into the uranium recovery process water system. So they have something called a hot waste drain. And the water is used to further dilute the concentration of the water solution to a level that is acceptable for discharge into the hot waste drain. So they discharge this into a drain, flushes right down the river. So they had a backflow go into this hot waste drain apparently. And this is classified as a non-emergency. Once again, everything here you see is a non-emergency. This is all the last few days. Elevated radiation levels at Radio Pharmacy. Radio Pharmacy with a cyclotron report high area dosimetry readings inside the facility, with the highest readings being 12,276 megaram for the month of April. Readings were elevated for the first 10 days of May. So it was actually, they think it was from the production process of their, their treatments, the radiation they want to feed their um, chemo patients. Then they had a problem in a similar area of Pennsylvania at the Skushkarina plant. Exhaust fan breaker failure causing low secondary containment differential pressure. But it's not an emergency, guys. No panic. Loss of safety function. No panic. Pressure couldn't be maintained, guys. Emergency diesel generator. They're breaking down. Like very, very old antique cars. Those cars that they drive in Cuba, maybe. Probably run better than the plants that they had. And they had a hot shutdown at the Clinton plant in Illinois. I wouldn't be surprised if that's like the same type of nuclear plant like the one in Fukushima. Manual reactor scrams due to loss of feed water heating. Not emergency.